invite you to please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to the crypt of St. Michael's Cathedral. I am Mary Mullaney and along with Evan Hunter and Jane McDonnell, my companions in leadership of the Canadian region of the Loretto Sisters, I welcome you here to celebrate the closing of our 175 years of service to the North American people. Now, to be clear, this is a closing of the celebration, not a closing of our mission. <laughs> More about that later. First, we want to acknowledge that the land we are on today is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee's, and the Wendell peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations Inuit and Métis peoples. Over those 175 years, we have been accompanied and supported by many friends, clergy, congregation sisters, and friends. Um, we thank you who have come to join us today representing some of those groups. We welcome our distinguished visitors, some of whom will give their own greetings later. From our IBVM family, we a special welcome Carmel Swords, our general leader who has come from Rome to join us today, and our sisters who have come from the United States to be with us. We also welcome our friends in other religious communities and our colleagues from various sorry, educational institutions. All of the sisters here and those who are unable to be present welcome you with great joy. It is a tribute to the five sisters who came from Ireland in 1847 that their difficult start produced such a rich harvest for the church in Canada and the United States. Sister Bonaventure Phelan, who was the first of ours to die in Toronto and is buried back there in the crypt, gave her entire religious life to this mission, all one and a half years of it. And like her companions, generously lived Mary Ward's vision among the poor pouring out of Ireland in order that Christ be known and served. So many young women followed her example, ready to show that as Mary Ward predicted, women in time to come would do much. The Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary has expanded around the world, often in response to calls for help in the education of girls. This also always involved attending to the more basic needs of the families in order that the girls could continue their education. Mary Ward's history in the church necessitated her followers to have many branches, separated by distance, but not in mind and heart. We rejoice that we have now taken the first steps to bring all the daughters of Mary Ward toward official union in the next few years. We give thanks and praise to God for what has been, and we welcome what is to come. And now, please welcome His Eminence Cardinal Thomas Collins, who counts among his credentials of being a student at Loretto Guelph. I, I very much am grateful for the, the work of the Loretto Sisters. My great aunt was a Loretto Sister back in the late 19th century. And uh, I, as was mentioned, I studied in Guelph at the, uh, the Stanislaus School, St. Agnes School, and then uh, Bishop McDonald High School, and uh, very much appreciated the teaching 
and the spiritual leadership of the Loretta sisters that I knew in as a couple of years ago when I was a teenager. <laughs> and I, I do threaten them with the fact that I'm the only bishop in Canada who more or less can sing the maxims of Mary Ward. <laughs> But this is a sacred time and it is a sacred place. It's certainly our anniversaries are times as the year turns and changes and we reflect back on what is truly important, what is the mission that guides us to this day. And we have today the bringing to conclusion of the anniversary, the 175th anniversary year of the arrival of the first Loretto sisters here and uh, reflect with thanks uh, upon God's blessing upon the great work that's been done over those 175 years and learn from the tremendous self-sacrifice, especially of those very first sisters. Uh, I remember when the, uh, some of the leadership from uh, sisters from Rome came several years ago, and this was not yet anywhere near completed. It still isn't completed, as you notice. Uh, that uh, coming down here uh, and uh, to the tomb of the Loretta sisters who were among the first who met uh, the predecessor of Archbishop Leo and myself, uh, Michael Power, our first bishop, on the steps of the rectory there, which was built and still standing then. And I remember thinking as I greeted them that that is exactly what uh, Michael Power did in 1847, just a few weeks before he himself died. Uh, he was looking for uh, people who from Ireland, as he was searching over there in the early part of 1847, who would help uh, him and the whole community there to evangelize in this distant land from the homeland in Ireland to which they were so committed. And with great uh, dedication, they set forth across the dangerous journey across the Atlantic and into a dangerous journey as well, because obviously the, we had the typhoid and uh, the fever was raging at that time. And there were many who uh, gave their lives uh, because of them, and especially the Irish refugees. And indeed, uh, Bishop uh, Power himself was to do so within about two weeks of greeting them. And then they were left, the bishop who invited them had died. And they immediately, even before that, immediately set to work founding schools and uh, beginning their great work of, of missionary activity. A mission, a mission. A mission being sent forth from Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's the heart, that's the whole of it, that's everything. Uh, while I breathe, I find my hope in the cross. That's the heart of it all. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. And that's what is the sign that guides us and has guided uh, the Loretta sisters uh, down through the years. And I think a few years after they came here, um, the, uh, the, they said that the, the ladies from Toronto appeared in a stagecoach in Guelph, Ontario. <laughs> and my, uh, my grandfather, or my great-grandfather was there, Patrick Downey, to, to greet them to that new mission, which they began, and they began many others. And uh, so this place is, this is a sacred time because we think how we can recommit ourselves to the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is why they came. That's why they came. Why Mary Ward did everything, and all the saints down through history. And a sacred place, because here we have buried those four sisters. One who was there on that very first day, Mother Teresa Dees, uh, lived on for many years and founded uh, uh, centers all over the place. And she's buried not here, but in uh, Niagara, Niagara Falls. And uh, it's a sacred place here as we enter we see on the tomb of those Loretta sisters who literally gave their lives for Christ at a very young age, as was said, after a short time, uh, because of the suffering people engaged in that were experienced in those days. And here we have the tomb of Michael Power, who died uh, also not in his 20s, as many of them did, but in his, at the age of 42, our first bishop who gave his life also um, caring for those who were in the fever sheds down not far from here. This should inspire us, it should challenge us, it should encourage us. Um, it is this, we must uh, have that zeal and fire. Uh, there's this famous story of the ancient times, which I have often used when I'm giving retreats, which I'm doing a fair bit of these days. Um, 
And a young monk comes to an old monk and says, I've been trying to do various things, uh, you know, and nothing seems to, it seems rather bland, nothing seems to be happening in my life of service of Christ. And the old monk stretches out his hands and flames shoot out of the fingers and says, you must become fire. That's it. There's this call to holiness, a total dedication. None of the things of this age, none of the trends of this age, none of that. It goes like ashes on Ash Wednesday, goes gone with the wind. But we must become fire, the fire of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And then we will bring people to the Lord. And we must, it's not something external to us, it's something internal, as it was to those First Sisters and all the great saints who inspire us. So in this sacred place, between those two tombs, the people who did give totally the sacrificial fire of everything to the Lord, uh, totus to us. Uh, and in this sacred time, as we reflect back 175 years, I pray the Lord to abundantly keep that fire burning bright uh, within all of us. And on this day, we think especially of the daughters of Mary Ward and the religious who have done so much to bring Christ to the people of this community over the ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Well, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration today. Um, I welcome you wholeheartedly as we celebrate Holy Mass. And we think of the life-giving persons we mentioned today, the, the life-giving mission of Bishop Power, the life-giving mission of the sisters that came, um, and so many that have followed. And this reminds us of Jesus' life-giving mission. He came to give his life to us to save us. In Holy Mass, Jesus gives us his word. Jesus gives us himself. So let's prepare to receive the gift of Christ's word and Christ's body and blood as we give thanks and praise for all those people, all the sisters, Bishop Power, and those um, that have come before us, who have left us a great witnessing Let's give thanks and praise for God's compassion and mercy and kindness. And let us recognize that we are sinners and we need his forgiveness and his peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Now I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, foremost among the poor and humble, to be the Mother of the Savior. Grant, we pray, that following her example, we may offer you the homage of sincere faith and place in you all our hope and salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise, O oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. Out of the good treasure of the heart, the good person produces good, and out of evil treasure, the evil person produces evil. For it is out of an abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ, now, now and forever. forever. What a delight it is to be here, brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome you wholeheartedly. A special way, Cardinal Collins and Bishop Crosby, Father Ed, and all of you here today. It's a very special moment. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. Give thanks and praise to Almighty God of how he was able to work through the lives of the first sisters who arrived here and continued to work all of these decades in bringing the life of Jesus alive into communities and to families. Today's gospel is taken from chapter 6 of St. Luke, also referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, not to be confused with St. Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. And we read in this gospel passage foundational teachings, and the operative word here is foundational. Foundational teachings of our blessed Lord Jesus. Teachings that have been and continue to be life-giving, inspiring, challenging, and which, if put into practice, allow for Christ's kingdom to emerge. Jesus, St. Luke says, spent the whole night top of a mountain praying. At the end of that experience, he came down, he chose his 12 apostles. And he taught them his way, the ways of the kingdom, the path, holiness of life. The parable today ends with that of the two houses. And what brings it home for us today is this wonderful insight, which is very encouraging and consoling. The Lord is the master builder. And with extraordinary vision, he wants and solicits our attention, our prayer, and our collaboration for the coming of his kingdom. Of course, being the incarnate God, true God and true man, he could do it on his own. But as scripture attests to when St. Augustine said, the God who created you without you doesn't want to save you without you. He is a God of mercy and compassion. He is a God of peace and justice. He is a God of second chances and of surprises. And he's a God of collaborations. <clears throat> Foundations are necessary. We know in education, for example, if the grad students do not have a good, solid foundation in their undergraduate studies, we know how they struggle to keep up and progress at the graduate and postgraduate levels, right? Similarly, we're here in the crypt where we are surrounded by the founders of the church here in Toronto, where we are surrounded by the foundations, physical foundations of the cathedral, the mother church of the diocese. Of course, brick and mortar and blood, sweat and tears went into laying the physical foundation of the diocese, the church of God in Toronto most important. But the dead stones call out to the living stones. The living stones 
which were at the origin of that inspired dream and enterprise when good Bishop Power went to Ireland and seeking the generosity, the faith, the collaboration of such extraordinary women to join in this great dream of bringing Jesus to this part of the world in a marvelous way. And here we are 2,000 years after Jesus said those words, those teachings, foundational teachings. In 175 years, the arrival of the sisters who put those teachings into practice, who were inspired to keep on building the foundation, lives and families and communities and relationships on the solid rock of Jesus's teachings and the church's teachings. And we continue that legacy of the teachings of Christ by listening, by praying, and by acting. The words are, of Jesus are not just words of eternal life, and they are true. They are also effective, and they produce results. When Jesus said to the ill, be healed, they were healed. When he said to the lame, get up and walk, they walked. When he said to the sinner, you are forgiven, they were forgiven. And when he said, this is my body and this is my blood, it really became the body and blood of Jesus. So may our discernment of every day, as we listen, speak, and pray, and act, be guided by the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of other great Mary, Mary Ward. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. As the sisters have renewed their vows, we now join in prayer to our loving God, whom venerable Mary Ward called parent of parents and friend of all friends. You know the plans you have for us, for a future full of hope. Aware of your care and sustaining power in our lives, we bring our prayers of gratitude and hope to you this day. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole church, for Pope Francis and Francis, our Archbishop, and all ministers of the gospel, that the Holy Spirit will guide and inspire them as we prepare for the opening of the Synod. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. For political and civil leaders, that forsaking greed and self-interest, they will take seriously their task of good and just government for the good of all our citizens. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. For our courageous pioneer sisters and their followers, who inspired by the person of Jesus and by the charism of Venerable Mary Ward, successfully brought Catholic education to Toronto and then to cities and towns across Canada and the United States. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of our sisters who have worked in indigenous missions across North America, especially as we support the work of reconciliation and the fostering of healthy and just relations between settlers and the First Nations peoples. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for a deeper awareness of the critical importance of care for our planet, sharing and witnessing our concern by education, conscious raising, and personal sacrifice. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We commit ourselves to continue our efforts to care, protect, and educate the, the most vulnerable, taking strong stands against abuse, human trafficking, and all other forms of oppression. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those sisters, associates, and colleagues who have or are engaged in the ministries of social work, spirituality, health care, education for justice, parish ministry, and support of the most needy in our society. We remember in a special way our twin community in El Salvador. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the lives and the ministries of all our deceased sisters, especially for those first five founding members. And in a special way, we pray for those who have died during this anniversary. We pray in thanksgiving and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. We make our prayers through the intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Loving Father, welcome our prayers that we make in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of our devotion and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may through the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, 
the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should be under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be
Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And to all a wonderful rest of the day. Translate.